Hey guys, so as a person from Israel, I absolutely love archaeology. I always love to read more about it and also when you need to, like when you try to create something in Israel, you always have to call archaeologists to dig in the ground, like if you want to make a building to see if there's no, I don't know, agent history and most of the time they always find this weird like place um, or weird or cool coins and stuff. So you've been asking me to react to this guy, which by the way, I'm already subscribed to his channel because I absolutely love to learn from him. He's making sure that everyone will understand what he's saying and he's just like making history um, more approachable, I think. I really love his channel, so um, go subscribe to him. I haven't seen his new video, so my friend just cut the important parts out. So you guys, if you want to see it, go watch the original video in the original channel and I'll be reacting to his um, latest video. I hope it's gonna be like the latest video. I don't know if I'm gonna be edited on time, but yeah, let's watch it. Hey guys, today I'm going to show you the secret lingams of Angkor Wat Temple. Nobody has posted this information anywhere. This is not on YouTube. This is not even in any book. I love how These lingams have research, never been observed before. Like his when you walk around these passages in Angkor Wat, they have a lot of Buddha statues placed all around. It is said that a total of 108 Buddhas were placed originally all around like this in this temple. Impressive. But this is strange because Angkor Wat was originally built as a Hindu temple and 108 is a sacred number of Hindus. So why would the original builders place 108 Buddha statues here? Let's examine this mystery. And here you can see this Buddha statue. Its head is broken. Now, the Buddha is already seated on a naga, a snake, and he's placed on a pedestal or a base. To a casual observer, there is nothing wrong. But so something is very weird about the base. It does not fit the Buddha at all. You can see that the base is square and there is a groove, an outlet for the water. This is the base of a lingam and this groove is for the water to flow. I have shown you a lot of lingams like this and how they have these spouts or outlets for water. And look, the Buddha statue is completely separate and it's not even seated on the base properly. I'm just so that he actually where is, is the lingam? Where is the cylindrical part that once sat on this base? Believe it or not, it's sitting right here. You can see a part of the broken cylinder. This was the lingam which originally stood on the base. And here's another Buddha. This Buddha is much smaller than the base. And you can see the full base of the lingam here, how a lingam would have been originally placed. Maybe like this is true only like for small Buddha statues. Statue. What about the giant Buddha statues placed in Angkor Wat? Look at this one. This Buddha is more than eight feet tall, has a huge seven-headed naga guarding him while he is in deep meditation. This is just a fantastic statue that even as a visitor, you want to pay respect to this Buddha. But look at the base. It's obvious that it's not at all a part of the Buddha statue. And you can see this rectangular groove for water outlet. There was originally a lingam here. And when civilizations changed, the lingams were destroyed and these Buddha statues were placed on top of them. Okay. I have examined at least a dozen of these Buddhas and it's a very interesting modification to watch. When the temple was taken over by a different religion, they just removed the cylinders. 
but they kept the bases and placed the newer Buddhas on top of these bases. This is not a very well-engineered modification. Uh, in almost all cases, uh, the bases look completely different than the Buddhas. Okay, so you have now seen the 108 lingams inside Angkor Wat Temple, but these are not the lingams I wanted to show you. I want to show you the secret lingams that have been hiding underground for many centuries. In 2015, researchers used laser scanning equipment called LIDAR attached to low-flying helicopters and scanned the Angkor Wat area. And they were shocked to find a large field full of cylindrical projections hidden all around the temple complex. Archaeologists are calling them domes because they are cylindrical structures with nice smooth tops. Cool. These are obviously lingams. But it's not just that the buried like lingams nine. that have stunned scientists. It's the sheer volume of them. They have found vast fields full of these lingams arranged in grid-like fashion, awesome. forming a large matrix. Experts confirm that these ancient structures were built around the same time as the Angkor Wat temple. Why were hundreds of these lingams built all around Angkor Wat temple complex? Why did ancient builders build such a large number of lingams both inside and outside the temple walls? This is like a part these of the lingams are debunking all mainstream theories. Experts have always argued that there's nothing special about lingams. They're just statues people built, hoping the others will come and worship these lingams and give donations. But these lingams found by lighter technology is proving this wrong. If lingams were built only for worship and donations, why would they make these hundreds of lingams in a grid-like fashion and place them yeah, outside like the walls of Angkor Wat? Them. These lingams must have been used for a specific reason. It's been five years since these lingam grid has been discovered, but even today, experts say that the purpose of them is unknown, and they've called this the most enigmatic feature of ancient Cambodia. That's but so we cool. know what will eventually happen. They will claim that these were just random earthen mounds created for religious reasons. We cannot expect any other outcome from mainstream theorists. But what if I told you each of the lingam in the dome field was not only planned carefully and constructed with accuracy and precision, but also was absolutely necessary for the construction of Angkor Wat. These secret lingams were a part of the blueprint of Angkor Wat Temple. Wait, did I just say blueprint of Angkor Wat? Where is that blueprint now? It's on top of a mountain called Phnom Kulin, about 50 kilometers away from Angkor Wat. What? Here you can see a square in the middle and inside that square, you can see five lingams or domes. Now cool. compare this with the five domes of Angkor Wat. There's one in the center and four around the central dome, exactly the same layout. Not only that, the square is not complete. It has a narrow extension reaching out. This is the causeway that connects the main temple with the outside area. They're like building it. And you can see the moat in the blueprint. The it's a large like strip between the inside and the outside. There's no doubt that this is the blueprint of Angkor Wat. But all these details are not important. The most important part is the vast lingam grid carved around the temple. It clearly lays out that there were hundreds of domes carved 
all around it like a matrix, and they must have been an integral part of Angkor Wat, because otherwise they would not have been carved here. LiDAR technology reveals that this entire place was a small-scale model of Angkor Wat, accurately filled with these lingams, and it's not just lingams. In some places, there are just holes, not protrusions. They are negative lingams or inverse lingams. Today, LiDAR technology is revealing the same pattern. There are these giant domes, but there are also depressions in some places. What were they doing with these lingams? Why were they created as an integral part of the temple? Today, we think this is the Angkor Wat temple, and this is just the woods and the new city built around it. This is not true. There are hundreds of lingams placed carefully all around the structure we see today. These lingams were an integral part of the ancient temple, like and we can understand that from the, the blueprint and of and Angkor no Wat. Idea. Here you can uh, again see another blueprint of Angkor Wat, a square within a square connected by a causeway. And look carefully, again, completely surrounded by these vast lingams spreading everywhere. Okay. So I have finally shown you all the forgotten lingams, both inside and outside the temple walls. But the real question is, why? What were the ancient builders doing with these lingams? Why did they want to build all these lingams in a grid-like fashion all around the Angkor Wat temple? Perhaps the real answer can be found if we find the eight lingams submerged in the middle, deep in the water of this moat of Angkor Wat Temple. I hope you guys like this video. I am Praveen Mohan. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and also click on the bell button, get all the updates. Please give it a thumbs up and do share it with your friends. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. This is why I love his channel. He's like explaining stuff in such a simple way and you can honestly understand what is he talking about. Um, okay, let's break down what we saw. First of all, I do understand that people are coming and conquer like a different place and like a different religion and then put in their statues um, on top of stuff that are important to other people. Um, yeah, I kind of, I'm kind of, I'm kind of familiar with that. Um, but the thing is that he was just like shaking the statue it was i was like in shock because in here this will never be acceptable if he would try to do this here um policemen will immediately be there or like security guards just to see why are you trying to touch um and shake and i don't know get out one of the buddhas i don't know so weird um but it was really interesting to see that different culture came and still respect the you know the culture that was there before i mean they still uses the temple they still look at this as a holy place which is absolutely beautiful it was also really interesting to see how like how people back then like created stuff like built stuff um from the mountain i'm assuming they didn't have this um i don't know how it, what's the name in english so i'm just gonna put a picture so they didn't have that thing so they actually like went to a mountain and then had the blueprint and just like did it and then watched like from above what they're creating it's really really cool and amazing to see how much i mean how how smart they were back then and um, the fact that you can find during um today's equipment that like there's stuff buried under the ground um, and people, maybe people actually live above them. It's really cool. I know that in Egypt, um, the machine he, he talked about was one of the machines they used to see um, what's under the pyramid. And when they found out that the pyramid is not just like this um, pyramid and that's it, there's also like a big uh, room under the pyramid and that's the only way they could find it. Um, so that was really interesting to see how people are using the equipment to actually to learn about history, to learn about the history that 
you cannot like rewrite apparently because also if you change if you put your statue there there's still gonna be remains of the you know the things before so you still will be able to learn about the history now um whether or not they made this because of like religion purposes honestly i don't care they created something really really important because i know it's look at how straight it all is and look you can honestly see they they put a lot of thought into it so that's really interesting i can't like wait to see what else people will i don't know what the machines what the people will you know think about like what the theory behind all of this because Honestly, history is really important and it's really interesting to learn history through, you know, through objects, through what remains from the past and not through, you know, people who telling you we want to, this is the history because I don't know, in here when you find like a coin from the ancient history of like Israel, I don't know if you noticed, but Israel is not the young 70 something year old country that we are right now, we used to actually have um, a kingdom here and we have coins we have a lot of stuff people are finding right now that is honestly incredible to see that we actually have um, what we're talking about all the time that the 12 tribes are actually going back to their home to actually see um, archaeology and to see like things that are actually like saying yeah this is true they used to live here and they've been forced to live and this is what they left behind it's really interesting and i really honestly i love this guy i'm sorry for blabbing but go watch the original video on his channel go watch his channel basically like learn history um yeah thank you so much for watching this video please if you enjoyed it um give it a thumbs up recommend to me what else should i watch um subscribe if you enjoy this and yeah i'll see you next time bye guys